Hey, what's up guys, Arava here, and welcome back to the episode of my F1 2020 My Team Career Mode, episode 133 today for the Dutch Grand Prix at Zandvoort. If you guys did miss the previous one at the Bahrain Grand Prix, then be sure to go check the one before you see this one. This is the third round of season eight, and it has been an absolute firecracker so far. We had a very enthralling opening round, and then round two at Bahrain was absolute chaos, a roller coaster of emotions, especially for me, because at one point, we're a second last place uh, with only a couple of laps to go and then some safety guards did help us out the soft compound attire a bit of you know aggressive driving towards the end and some nice moves and we're able to match our p6 from round one and uh, so we're sitting uh, p5 in the championship mick schumacher and fortry only on one point and you can see how much of an issue that may be i'm really hoping that he comes good quick in the next few episodes we need him to because you can see mcclaren Aaron look very nice at the top there. It was a double podium for them last time out with Ocon winning the race, Hamilton in third. And if they, can, if, they, if they keep that consistency of Ocon at least getting on the podium and Hamilton being somewhat, you know, high points, then they're going to continue to look comfy in the championship. And if I'm basically got, if I'm fighting in the constructors with one hand tied behind my back with Schumacher unable to get to grips with being in a top team, then we have issues. It, obviously, not to say that our team is right there. Obviously, I've still got some teething issues. We made a massive of a mistake last episode so it's not just Mick I need to buck up I need to get to grips with this car and uh, get back to the kind of race pace and even quality pace that we were showing a lot of times last season but of course the drivability has been an issue the Honda power unit has changed the way the car handles that I'm used to for the Mercedes one we had for the last two seasons but that's no excuse and I feel you know minus the spin I was getting more comfy around Bari especially at the end with some of the moves we we're making and the pace we we're showing at times I do feel like I'm getting on top of this car slowly but surely. Mick, on the other hand, I'm not too sure. As I alluded to in the last two episodes, looking at his performance, it maybe looks like because he was an original F2 driver, um, you know, even though on paper his stats are there, maybe he just doesn't have that last little bit when the tyre wear kicks in to be able to race at the highest level potentially against, you know, the likes of Lando and the Red Bull, Ocon and McLaren, etc, etc. So we're going to have to watch that with, uh, with a key Nine, and see how he progresses. Third time lucky maybe this episode for him to show what he's really got in the car. Uh, who knows? Who knows? But we come to Zandvoort then. Always quite a very tricky Grand Prix. You know, it's a tale of two halves. Qualifying has always been very difficult for me. I'm not really that great over one lap around this circuit. When it comes to the race, even the race pace is a bit questionable here and there. It's more so the aggressive strategies that we've done in the past. Either last season going for the one stop, which at the time was quite a, a gamble for us because the tyre wear was so high, or the previous seasons we've gone for a very aggressive two stop that's allowed us to have the pace of the fresh tyres to overcome maybe any deficit I have. And obviously, like I said, we're still getting fully used to this car. So into Q1, you'll notice we're on the set of yellow wall medium tyres doing two laps here just to kind of suss out the circuit a bit, get a feeler for where I'm losing some time and where we can gain some time with this car. Getting two tens only on that second lap, which is a little bit of a shame, but then we go on to the, the soft compound attire, trying to get through now into Q2 with P16, which technically would be enough to get through into the second part of qualifying, but of course, I'm sure others will be going a little bit quicker, so let's see what we can do now on the first set of red wall tires we're using for this weekend. Hopefully get through on one set, and then we've got two obviously to go through into Q2 if we need it, but ideally we take two fresh sets into the top 10 shootout and get through in one set in the second phase of qualifying but on this lap one whole second gain looking very good little bit wide though on the left and we've absolutely bottled it here in q1 a massive Howl a mistake there. Got a bit over aggressive on the inside curb, and that basically then set us up to go too aggressive then on the left hand side curb on the exit, going too wide, planting the power as usual. But because we went early on the entry, it meant we went wide on the exit to maintain that speed and going on the curb, a little bit tired on the gravel, spun us round, and uh, we hit the wall on the inside. Thankfully, the car's not fully out, but it doesn't really matter, to be honest, because we're right at the death of the qualifying. You can see the cars on my left. 
left there going out for their final run because we've got only about, you know, a minute and a bit left and the damage is going to take a minute and a bit left to repair. So by the time the damage is done, session is over and to my dismay, I did think for a second, could we please, please just stay in P16 and get through by the skin of our teeth into, into Q2. Unfortunately, that is not the case. Mick is through looking pretty good in P3 here in Q1. So the car maybe has some pace to show, but I'm unfortunately not going to be able to show what I can do with that uh, in Q2 or Q3 because we are out in the first part of qualifying. This has really been uh, not a great uh, season of qualifying so far. You know, yeah, the first race we got knocked out in Q2. Last race was much better. That was where I expected us to kind of be with where the car is right now, with where we're feeling. Um, and it's a far cry from, you know, the good qualifying showings we're doing time and time again uh, where, whilst we're, you know, partnering with Lando last season. Of course, the car is taking a little bit of a step back. I've taken a step back with how comfortable I am over one lap and it's, it's hurting us a lot here. So we've got a lot of hard work to do tomorrow then in the race to make up the ground from P17. Let's go to the grid. Welcome along then to the North Sea coast and Zandvoort, 25 miles away from Amsterdam and the host for today's Dutch Grand Prix. It's a race the great Jim Clark won on four occasions, leading for an astonishing total of 370 laps. A lap of this short 2.6 mile Zandvoort circuit features 14 corners, 10 to the right and 4 to the left. The main straight is 678 metres long and heads into turn 1, the Tarzan corner. With DRS down the main straight into the braking zone, that could be the best overtaking opportunity on the track. Joining us today to oversee all the thrills and spills, it's Anthony Davidson. And great to see you. How are you feeling about the race today and how are the circuit conditions from what you've seen? Well, it's looking a bit cold out there, if I'm honest. These tyres have quite a narrow operating window in terms of the temperatures they need to extract the best grip. So with a cold track surface, it's going to be harder to keep those temperatures up, which will lead to lower grip and maybe more mistakes. It's time to see how our drivers are stacking up after yesterday's exciting qualifying session. Lando Norris put in a fantastic lap yesterday and will start from pole position. And it's Charles Leclerc in P2. Looking at the rest of today's grid, we have Sainz, Stroll, Esteban Ocon and Albon, Gasly, Verstappen, Giovinazzi and Nick de Vries, Hamilton, Bottas, Mick Schumacher and Kvyat, Magnussen, Matsushita, the owner driver and Nicholas Latifi, Aitken, Giotto, Russell and Guan Yu Zhou. Which of these talented drivers will come out on top today? Right, so here we are then on the grid in P17. And if you watch the grid sequence there, you'll notice it wasn't actually a great day for the team on Saturday because Schumacher was also then knocked out in the very next session in Q2. He is on the grid in P13. And that's a legitimate P13. It's not like a 10 plays grid penalty from P3. That is where he qualified according to the grid sequence uh, animation. So that is a bit concerning. He was in the top three in Q1 though so I feel like maybe there's some kind of uh, annoyance with maybe the way the simulation times were or it may just be where the car is and if it is then we've got a very long day ahead of us but I'm hoping not but Lando Norris surprise surprise on another pole position here for his new Red Bull team Leclerc in second place though Ferrari at least in the hands of him showing some great pace with his teammate Giovinazzi down in ninth place there strategy for us then indicated one stop as per usual but we know that that sometimes is very much not the quickest way around this circuit and I think from where we are we've got two options we can go for the very you know gambling one stop that we did last season but I'm not really feeling like we can do that with how we are uncomfortable we are feeling with the car I think we need to go aggressive and use the fresh tire advantage to gain some extra lap time as we go on through this race rather than trying to eke out the tires and keep the rear end in check and the front end even as well which uh, we know I'm having issues with so far this season so I think the two stop is going to be the vibe for us. We're going to start on the soft compound attire. We'll see how it plays out, of course, and we can kind of react to what's happening in the race. If there's a safety car or whatnot, obviously that will change things, but that's my thinking going into this one. But it's going to have to be a very strong race for both myself and Mick to recover from where we are. Well, we've had some really decent races around here in the last three seasons, so hoping for more of the same today as we go to five red lights then for round number three of season eight at the Dutch Grand Prix. We're underway, and it's a good start for us compared to the Alpine 
Bean and the Hass ahead of us of Kevin Magnussen. We shoot through on the left-hand side as the gap opens up, and we're going to try and go around the outside of Altry Bottas and the Alpha Tower. getting caught up, though, quite a lot on the curb, so that kind of slows us down. Still trying to go and overtake the Finn as we see Schumacher up the road overtaking Lewis Hamilton in the McLaren. So good to see Mick actually making some progress off the bat. He's up into P11, so maybe that bodes well for both of us. That easy, even he is making some overtakes here and looking a bit more comfy on the heavy fuel initially in this first part of the race on lap one as uh, we actually, the less can be said about ourselves because Bottas is still attacking us here and he's only just been squeezed out, had a little bit of a wobble on the front end he did on our rear end in the mirror and we're still kind of struggling for understeer, kind of get the nose turned, you can see compared to the, everyone else's racing line going very wide so we need to try and calm ourselves down a bit, get settled in find a rhythm and then try and look to carve away through these uh, next few cars. Hamilton obviously in a top car in the McLaren but we know Hamilton has been struggling ever since season three. Had that obviously glimmer of uh, you know a rejuvenation maybe last season when he won the Spanish Grand Prix but as of late has just looked his same slow self from the rest of our career series. So we dive down the inside of him. Good straight line speed actually off that bend using plenty of ERS. Squeezing Hamilton out very much so on the exit. Looking back and we were very close to his nose cone tapping my gearbox almost and now we actually catch De Vries completely unawares he was just completely focused on Schumacher and was asleep at the wheel on the inside on the left on the carousel and so we got right around his outside we're up into P11 and this has been a cracking start lap number two already just outside the points paying position and Schumacher is now making a dive bomb down the inside of Giovinazzi can he make the overtake on the Ferrari on the exit massive squirm on the rear end though for Schumacher maybe already feeling some tyre wear possibly and we're going to go try and go round the outside it's going to be a bold move on the exit though I get a rear end twitch ironically and we actually make some contact with Mick on the rear end we get a warning for collision so a little bit close for comfort with our teammate here but looking to try and find a way past and he's really struggling and you can see on the rear end you've got absolutely no traction on the left hander and now we're on the outside as we enter the banking and we're going to keep our foot in this entire time it's so close to Schumacher so close to the wall but we keep our nerve and we made the pass and now we go for a really bold dive bomb to the inside of turn one Giovinazzi actually gets scared so much so that he locks up on the front right and we've got two positions for one in the span of a, se uh, well, a sequence of uh, two corners and a straight so really lovely move that was though on Schumacher kept it round on the outside of the banking and that would have been an epic sight uh, I'm sure on the off ball where we kept on the on board because it was still pretty epic from, from the cockpit view there on the T-cam, but uh, in the lead then is Lando Norris still off that pole position, controlling the race behind him though is Leclerc and Sainz still in that order they were on the grid, then you've got Ocon Stroll, the two Mercedes cars, so I said I'm surprised they're struggling this much because the Mercs have been very strong actually around this circuit, especially Verstappen his home race, he's been very strong in previous seasons around here, so surprised to see them kind of not being able to attack the cars ahead of them speaking of attacking, we're going to go ahead and get Albin, who's looking very slow compared to his teammate Lance Stroll, who's right up there putting on the pressure on Ocon in the McLaren. We get up into P8, so this has been very good progress. Lap number five, we're in P8, and now we've got clean air to bridge the gap to these guys. And the thing is, Lando's extending his lead, and Leclerc, he's being a bit of a cork in the bottle here. He's slowing everyone up so much so that you can see I've actually caught up to this pack. And Sainz, though, goes for a little uh, lunge to the inside, tries to get his nose in but Leclerc defends successfully and maintains the P2 but he's slowed this pack up right up which means within a matter of laps I've caught up to Verstappen here, we're on the back of this train, even Schumacher who got past Giovinazzi, he's not too far away from me, 1.3 seconds the gap so you can see how slow Leclerc has backed this pack up into all of us but lap number 8 and I think it's time to come in for that first pit stop, one of two to make an aggressive two stop work, going to come in onto a set of medium tyres and then leave the soft compound set for the final stint and go very aggressive indeed because I reckon these guys, another reason for why they're kind of slowing up each other is because they're all stuck in each other's dirty air the tyre wear's kicking in and we're able to catch them up in clean air so what can we do in clean air and fresh medium tyre
requires, I think, a fair amount. We've seen how powerful the undercut can be around here, coupled with the AI getting stuck in kind of each other's traffic and, uh, and tire wear as well added on to that. So we're going to get our head down now and we're going to have to believe in the strategy because if there's any doubt, it won't work. We need to commit and drive flat out pretty much now to get these positions, get the time on these guys on the undercut. And so with that, on to lap number 10. Still not actually setting some personal best lap times here, but catching the cars ahead of Latifi and Kafiat. We go round the outside. Easy does it. Massive moment for Kafiat. And he actually holds us up and boxes us in into the left-hand side with Latifi on the right of us. So we're desperately trying to get through and pass the Alpine car. Lovely little switch from right to left. The traction pays off for us. And we've overtaken the rushing up into P15. Clean air ahead. And we're going to catch up to George Russell next. 2.5 the gap now. We're down to less than half a second. On to lap number 12. DRS propelling us forward. Big break zone into turn one. And again, trying to feather the throttle. Round the outside. A little bit iffy on the exit because Russell puts up a fight. But we get to the apex and we're up into P14. So making really quick progress. I mean, we got held up a little bit with the Alpine car. But other than that, making good progress. But look at this. This is how slow everyone's going with the tyre wear. They're also stubborn of doing the one stop. That Schumacher is fully behind Verstappen now. And even Hamilton, who was like five seconds back from Schumacher and like a further seven from me he's now caught up to these guys so it's like it's like almost in real life when these teams are so stubborn of doing one less stop that they hurt their own race pace and they're going so slow and Leclerc and Sainz come in that could be the opening of the cork to the bottle maybe as Ocon continues on so I won't be surprised if uh, Ocon uh, looks to maybe jump those guys in his own kind of overcut strategy even though the tire wear is very high let's see about that but lap number 12 so we've already had four laps then in this kind of traffic, not clean air exactly, traffic, but on fresher mediums, and we've been selling some good lap times despite overtaking people at the same time. We looked to overtake Bottas there, jumped quite a few people in the pit lane, and we're up into P7, so we're already one position higher than when we were before the pit stops, and I'm sure that's going to get there even more as we close up to Giovinazzi, who is continuing on and looking very slow. Now, if this is the pace of everyone in that top seven, then I think we've got a very good strategy on our hands. To say saying that, though, I did just make a mistake there as the rear end switch. So as much as the two stop, you know, I'm not going to face as much tyre wear as all these guys on a one stop. I will still be feeling some tyre wear because that's how high it is around Zandvoort. So the rear end is a little bit lively on the medium still. Just have to make sure we don't make a howler mistake like we did in qualifying or Bahrain. But we come through the final bend uh, into the next lap and ahead of me is the Red Bull of Lando Norris. Now remember, he was in the lead. We're actually up into second place on the road. Leclerc is in third. It's still Leclerc, signs Ocon, Stroll, Gasly, uh, Verstappen, and Alpine's in the mix there because he's out of sync of the race, but it's still the exact same order. I'm very surprised Ocon didn't jump at least uh, at least Sainz, so it's the same pecking order, but we've jumped everyone, and we go and set the fast after the Grand Prix, finally on lap 19, finding our feet with the medium tyres. I guess, you know, the clean air paying massive dividends. Uh, this is the first time I've been in clean air for the entire race. I've been uh, having to overtake so many slow cars before that and we're now getting the hammer down because the job is now to overtake Lando try and build a gap if we can and then come in for a final set of soft compound tyres but we've already done a massive job of undercutting what was that like six cars that's how slow they were going on those really worn soft tyres and that's why you don't want to be that stubborn in these kind of scenarios by sticking it out but speaking about the cars behind me they're in a battle of their own and it looks like science is trying to break this DRS train they've been stuck in for a while on the inside, he's well, fully alongside him. He's actually ahead of the Ferrari, but then Leclerc gets the traction mid-corner and gets back past him. Some great driving from the Ferrari man to maintain P3. In what seems to be very much a slower car, the Ferrari seems to have better one-lap pace this season than it does race pace, which has been very different to what they've done in the past. And now Sainz goes for a second attempt. This is on the very next lap. This time he's on the outside. He's learned from his mistake, and he out-tractions Leclerc in the same fashion he did on the previous lap and Sainz is up into P3 so Red Bull looking like the strongest unit as a team as the two are in the top three and Ocon I would be surprised if he doesn't get past
past Leclerc very, very soon because that Ferrari does actually look, just look very, very slow in these race conditions. But now you can see back to our POV, lap 20. We are pushing hard, so much so that we're having to drift the car around at some corners because I am now feeling the medium tyre is starting to wear a bit. We've just got to go for a few more laps and keep digging to try and overtake Lando if we can just before we make the pit stop. I think that'll be, you know, not really crucial but kind of symbolic in a way because, you know, we're not going to pull a gap now on him, on him anymore. But if we can just get ahead of him, I feel that'll just give us a bit of confidence maybe for the rest of the race potentially. But here goes Ocon. What did I say? Looking to make the move on the Ferrari. But Leclerc does a fantastic job of yet again doing that same job of out-tractioning his rival on the outside. Ocon didn't learn from Sainz's mistake and Ocon might have to go again and might have to take a leaf out of the Spaniard's book and try on the outside of, of, of uh, turn one. And uh, those guys, well, that's how slow Leclerc is. Look at that. That's how much of a gap that Sainz has uh, built already to those guys. So they're just showing the Ferrari really not liking the race pace versus one lap. And you can see we are continuing just to you know, kind of be there, putting on the pressure onto Lando, but not got the pace quite yet to make that move to, to, to get the lead, as it were, right now in the race as it stands. But here goes Ocon, speaking up, making a move and getting it done. He eventually does. And what you know, it's on the outside of turn one. So he eventually gets it right. It's second time lucky. Both times, Sainz and Ocon had to learn the hard way, which way ways to go on the outside of turn one. But he's back through and now he has clean air to chase after Sainz. But speaking about chasing after people, here we are, lap 22. It's been nothing but red sector times on the top right because Lando's dirty air has been affecting us and hampering us a bit. You know, it's the saying, it's easy to catch a car. It's one other thing to overtake. But here we go then, lap number 23, overspeed with DRS. We set a purple lap time with two red sectors because our last sector is so strong and we go dancing around the outside. We look behind us because Lando did try to keep his nose in, but no, we get the overtake. But like I said, an overtake for the lead here now would be rather symbolic instead because we're going to come straight in lap 23 for the soft compound attire. So we didn't get a chance to, you know, spend a few laps to, you know, build a gap to Lando. We're going to come in straight away. But that's fine because I think the pace that me and Lando showed in that second stint was so strong that I should come out in clean air. I should come out still in second place. So this race has really turned into Lando v myself, which is very, very cool to be honest, because there we are ahead of Sainz and we're still in second place, but we're now on the soft compound attire. So, oh, as Sainz dives down the inside though, he has a little look on the carousel, almost where he takes me out there, but it is very much a Hamilton v Verstappen scenario. I'm Hamilton in this situation uh, and Lando is Hamilton. We're on the fresh tire. We've made the bold call to go for the two stop and now we've got to get the hammer down to pull about a 13 to 14 second gap in 12 laps time, which sounds a bit crazy, but the thing is, remember, we're on fresh soft compound tires, Lando's on hards that have been on there since, what, lap 14 or 13? So it's been a long while. He's going to have some major tire wear. So I'm hoping it's gonna be like at Spain in real life, that he just doesn't have any tire wear on that Red Bull of his to cope when we catch up to him. But that's a big if. We need to actually do the job, get the lap times in. And you can see on lap 27, that's exactly what we're we're doing purple, purple, and purple. We've got nine laps to go, 10 seconds remaining. So this is going to be close. I need to kind of almost hope that the tire wear and the cliff start hitting Lando by the end of the race. Maybe even some traffic to help us out and that we're consistent enough to keep up these lap times. Meanwhile, behind us, Ocon is in with that clean air. He's pushed away from Leclerc, who's now fallen behind in the Mercedes sandwich. And Ocon may be looking to overtake signs for P3 to keep up a string of podiums so far. This this season, but this is a really fantastic vibe, you know, it's me v Lando once again, but the difference is we're now in different teams, he's in the Red Bull, we're still in our, you know, brand looking a new car for season eight, so, you know, the gloves are off a bit, you know, last season, whenever we went, you know, dueling together, there was that level of, you know, we're teammates, so we can't go all out, well, whereas now, we're complete rivals here, you know, <laughs> I can't promise anything in terms of, you saw how aggressive the fighting was at Bahrain, and I think we're going to get round number two of that. And we're going to get Lando v. Me 2.0. Maybe not just for this race. Maybe this is setting up a season-long battle. And maybe this is a chance this season for Lando to get revenge on me for winning the championship last season. That would be quite something. I think that would be quite enjoyable if it did end up being me and Lando battling out for the championship once again. Because he has looked very strong this season. 
but here we are. This is the litmus test. We've not looked so strong in this car so far this season, but for the first time, I'm genuinely looking and feeling fast, albeit because I'm on soft compound tyres versus everyone else's very worn out hard tyres, but it's still something to build the confidence. And you've hopefully been paying attention and watching on whilst we've been talking about all of that. We've hit some traffic and that traffic has genuinely helped me out a little bit. And also I think the pace now is finally slowing up for Lando. He's finally feeling that tyre we're on the hard compound tyre. And so here we are into the carousel and the, the Haas I think like that is holding him up a little bit. We get a good exit. We've got some ERS to use. We're up into Rich Mix despite being in negative fuel. Can we go for a move on the inside and we're going to get our nose in? Oh, a little tap on the rear right tyre and we had to back out that otherwise that would have been a horrendous spin and collision with Lando mid corner so uh, he had the corner but I tried my best to just get the nose in and try to make some epic move on the inside but you know we've learned over the races over the seasons to be a bit more patient maybe in some of the fighting we've been doing and so we can wait a little bit longer he is going to be massively slower on every exit corner exit surely and that's a testament right here he blocks us off a little bit we're weaving around trying to find some space into the banking nothing worth it so now we go through into the banking section he's slow oh he's had a wobble midway through and we nearly tapped his rear left and now we get the exit DRS open into turn one a little bit too deep though for us and Lando has a brilliant brake zone we're now side bus on the exit we get caught up in the curb a little bit we're gonna try and pull it through on the left it's a kamikaze dive into the carousel massive lock up from us we don't get the traction though because Lando's got a better racing line a little bit more blocking from the Brits in the Red Bull car and a beautiful screen freeze of course we do as we enter the heart of sector two we've only got one sector left after this it's the last lap remember so this is going down to the absolute wire for the race win between myself and Lando traffic ahead of us in the Alpine car we've got a massive tank slap and we've drifted the car and somehow caught it and kept the car momentum going but a contact made on the front left we bang tires and Lando defends successfully again on the inside he actually even gets DRS on that mini straight for some reason as we now through the left hander we've only got one whole banking to go Lando's in the lead at the moment into the last bend can we do the impossible it's gonna be a photo finish DRS is gonna be available to us ERS deploying here we go and to the line we out drag him and we cross the line for the race win at the Dutch Grand Prix and it's somewhat of a photo finish because we do it literally as we cross the line. What a race win and what a drive and what a battle with Lando for the last two laps. My they God. They could pull off the win here in Zandvoort, but they have done and done it in spectacular style. Talk to me, Ant. What was it that set them apart from the competition today? Well, Crofty, this was won through an abundance of speed and an abundance of skillful overtakes. Inside, outside, cutting underneath, we saw it all today. And it's really nice to see a Grand Prix won in that manner. A race sure. Well, I'm thoroughly exhausted after the excitement of that race, but I'm sure it's nothing compared. Well, I'm thoroughly exhausted after the excitement of that race, but I'm sure it's nothing compared to our drivers here. They've worked hard to make it up there and it's great to see them make their way out onto the podium. Well, that is one way to announce that you are very much still going to be a person in the championship fight for this final ever season of the My Team career mode. We had a shaky first two rounds and we have done a mega job today. I'm still not sure we've, we're fully on top of the car, don't get me wrong, but that was a massive confidence boost of, I actually felt really good for once. It was, you know, really just, it was no one else. Me, v Lando, we're in a world of our own on a different level to everyone else in our own little race, and it was so satisfying to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with him once again, having been teammates for the whole entirety of last season, and obviously being in a championship fight with him, uh, to, to have that again on, on a grand stage, but this I'm in two different cars was very very neat and so we have one win apiece and then of course Ocon won the last one and he also got on the podium so Ocon leads the championship and he's actually got a really nice cushion he's been the most consistent man so far this season not left the podium so far in the three rounds so you know he's he's definitely there he's definitely there he looks quicker and more consistent than he ever has done in that McLaren so far and that's been McLaren his issue for the last couple of seasons they've been quick but they haven't been consistently quick
maybe this is the time where it's finally going to be their chance to actually go for a proper championship bout. And in terms of Mick Schumacher, well, he did actually get some points today, some decent ones, I would say, uh, you know, compared to where he was on the grid. So I actually say it's a, it's a, fair, it's a decently fair, fair drive from him, really, considering he did a one-stop with everyone else and he managed to actually pull that off. So fair play. Maybe that he can build on that, hopefully, next episode. But what a race for us. Once again, the aggressive two-stop works out for us using that knowledge against the AI, knowing that they'll stick with the one-stop and be too stubborn, using that to our advantage as the player and then being consistent as we can with the lap times and just believing because we only well and truly got that done on the last corner, on the last lap. So that was not, you know, it wasn't, it was very, very close. We could have easily have lost that and just got second place, but always believe and we've actually done it. And guys, if you did enjoy that one, hit that like button. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. If you're new around here, then do get subscribed for weekly Formula 1 content and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.